Welcome to Spit Bucket. Uh, we're back again now with um, a couple of fantastic Chardonnays this evening. I'm a bit excited about this. You are a bit excited. Why are you excited? <laughs> because I like Chardonnay. How much do you like Chardonnay? I love Chardonnay. The most out of all grapes? <laughs> the most, oh God, that's so difficult. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> we have a confirmed Chardonnay lover here. I'm a big fan, but I, I you know. Yeah, well, you're Riesling, really. But We've got, we've, got, we've got two fantastic bottles um, to try this evening, which is really exciting. Um, and we're looking at, at just the question of whether uh, Chardonnay has regained its luster. Are people lusting, for a better word, after Chardonnay these days? Mm -hmm. After years of Chardonnay kind of being a little bit on the out, a little bit uncool, um, these days Australia's making the best Chardonnay it's ever made. Um, That's a you know, big call. France has been doing it for... <laughs> A thousand years, and they're quite good at it too. So we've got. Feel free to write him and tell him he's wrong. That's fine. Thank you, thank you uh, for your vote of confidence. Uh, we've got two heavyweights of the Chardonnay world against each other tonight. Uh, we will go with the um, French. First one is um, Chablis Premier Cru Vion. Vion is the name of the vineyard. Um, in Chablis, there are um, lots of different vineyards, and Vion is a is an excellent one. The producer is Domaine Simone Fev which um, is a great, a great Chablis producer. Uh, so this is French, yeah? This is French. Whereabouts yes. in France? So um, Chablis it is normally part of uh, Burgundy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the noise is a little bit distracting there. It's nominally part of Burgundy, but it is um, a fair distance north, um, near Auxerre. So, so, it, it's, it's, kind so of it's cooler a, there? It is cooler. Right. Um, and the main... Uh, oh, hey, nice good. work. The main... Um, thing to remember about uh, Chablis Thank is the you. soil. Uh, it sits on a, a bed of uh, limestone and Kimmeridgean clay. Now Kimmeridgean clay is some magical clay. Imagine like Terra Rossa yeah, in yeah, Coonawarra. Yeah. It's this little bit of dirt that comes up from underground that no one else has got, yeah. except in the south coast of England. It goes under the channel, comes up the other side. Are you making that up? No, to this, push is true. this is true. You're totally My dad this up. asked me to plant a vineyard there one day. Again, <laughs> 2025 people, the wine won't be here till 2025 <laughs> at the earliest. Uh, oh, but no, it all sinks in now, right? So okay. Chablis is very unique in terms yeah. of its style. Okay. So we'll give ourselves 60 seconds to have a look at what's going on here. First thing, wow, it's it's lots of mineral I get. And the colour as well. You spotted the colour, yeah. It's quite a deep sort of golden colour almost. Mm, it's beauty, that's what it is. Not overtly fruity, I have to say. Oh, no, and, and that and comes through on the palate as well, in fact. So if, if this special soil, is that going to be more kind of stony, flinty kind of... Oh, he spits again! Um, <laughs> In the, our well, traditional kind of Australian stance, or...? No? Um, I'm yes. not sure of the exact flint content of the soil, <laughs> I have to say. But it's a to lie I thought, I was, I thought the, 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 the clay limestone thing was, was probably good enough on the soil, wasn't fair it? Fair enough, fair enough. Sorry about that. We'll find out about that and I'll leave a comment underneath. Um, so, uh, what have we got here? We've got uh, an unoaked Chardonnay. That's the, the most important thing to remember okay. about Chablis. No oak in there. The, some, some of the Grand Crus do a little messing around with a little bit of oak these days, but this, this particular one, unoaked. Okay, sorry. Isn't that a little bit different to what we do in Australia with our Chardonnays? Absolutely. At which point, we should move on to the Stonia. Um, tell me three reasons why you really like that wine. Or not. <laughs> or one, is the <laughs> usual style. Um, I liked it because it is definitely more um, is minerally, is that yeah. the word? Oh, that's pronounced terribly. Minerally than, um, than traditional kind of Australian Chardonnays. It still has that kind of beautiful Chardonnay characteristics that kind of almost really coat your mouth as opposed to like a Sauvignon Blanc that goes straight down. Um, and yeah, it was yum. Okay, and for me, um, I'm thinking, yep, minerals. I'm thinking this would um, go beautifully with with a, a really simple fish dish, um, some some white fish. Whether you make the wine the star rather than the, the food. And third, um, I like the fact that in England, lots of people think that they hate Chardonnay, but they love Chablis. Oh well, never mind. Um, hopefully, we can educate everyone <laughs> that Chablis is Chardonnay as well. Uh, They're one and the same people. <laughs> right, let's move on. Oh, okay. Next okay. up, I haven't even poured mine out yet. <laughs> next up, we've we've come uh, to the Mornington Peninsula uh, in just south of Melbourne, which is a beautiful, cool climate region, producing great Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, and we've got a wine from Estonia, which is one of the pioneers of the region, one of the earliest established wineries there. 
and this is their reserve Chardonnay 2007. So it's the same vintage as the um, Chablis that we just tried. Um, it's a bit but lighter this, in this, it, it absolutely is. Oh, that smell that 60 nose. seconds on this one. Oh, sorry. The nose is bigger. <laughs> it has a bigger nose. It has a bigger nose. <laughs> and and what's, the, what's the one thing that you think has directed this wine in that mm. direction? <clears throat> is that the oak? That yes! would be the oak. There is a, this <laughs> this a wine has been fermented in barrels um, and and aged in oak barrels after that, one third of which were new. So it's not it's not over oak, but it has definitely no. got that kind of butteriness. Um, and it definitely it definitely comes out when you taste it as well. It, it feels oh I'm gonna just, it feels sacrilegious to say this, but it feels like it's rounder than the French one. Is that yeah. just because it's you've more fruit coming through or there's a little bit more fruit. Uneducated palate. But there is more fruit and the fruit is a bit more tropical. Ah, ah. Uh, why is it more tropical? Well that's that's a character you often get out of, of Chardonnay and oak aging as well. Ah, so um, the bring the two makes it more tropical. Absolutely. Okay. Quite different wines, I have to tell you, um, everyone. Um, so beautiful. Summing up this one. Yes. Three oh. reasons. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That is a, a strong endorsement from <laughs> Suzette. Um, for me, uh, I'd like to see this wine again outside with um, quite a, a rich seafoody, fishy type barbecue this time. I think it's got a little bit more <laughs> He's body. changing it up with the barbecue yeah, I think we can there. go a little bit richer with the food. Uh, so that's the first one. The weight and the feel in the mm. mouth in this, is it's quite luxurious. He wants to this say is, This is like slipping on some sort of silk um, dressing gown, of which I have many at home. Uh, really? And yeah, it's it's slippy and sliding. Things you didn't know about Dan, and, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and number three, um, I, I just think it's a great um, symbol of the resurgence of Australian Chardonnay and how, exactly. how balanced and how um, the fruit and the oak really fit together really nicely. Now this is important, Chardonnay is good, Chardonnay is your friend. Absolutely. The, forget the anything but Chardonnay crowd, the ABC thing. Yep. We are anything but ABC these days. Exactly. Again, Chardonnay, Chardonnay, Chardonnay. Chardonnay, Chardonnay, Chardonnay. Uh, now, scoring wise, well, where would you oh. like to go with those? Okay. I really liked the Australian. I thought it was beautiful. I thought Estonia was beautiful. Oh, I'm going to put it at like a 95. Wow, that's a massive call. <laughs> but but you did really love it. I did. And the Chablis, Chablis Premier no. Crew. From Simone Fev. Yes, that, again, my pronunciation is just like yours. Um, I'm, it, a 92. 92 for that yeah, one. I did still love it, but something about the, the roundness of this guy is just awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna go Simone Fev, but I'm gonna um, sit that one at 90. Um, oh, and the Stonia, stingy. I'm a little bit stingy. <laughs> I've got to leave room for improvement well, okay, in the future. True, sorry, the the Stonia, I'm gonna, I think, is an absolutely beautiful bottle. I'm gonna go with um, 92 for that one. And uh, both of them, around $45, uh, which is quite surprising. A lot of people think French wine is just really expensive mm. and Burgundy is super expensive, and, and a lot of it is. But this $45, um, and, and the Sonia as well. Uh, the, the Chablis is from, um, again, Ultimo Wine Center. No, it's not. It's from Dan Murphy's. I knew it was from Dan Murphy's. <laughs> and um, Stonia you can also find in some Dan's and, and quite widely available. Um, and just remember, we pronounce the names, so you don't have to know. That. Uh, Genius. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think, A, about Chardonnay. Leave a comment. Um, certainly, if you manage to go out and find any of these mm. wines, give us a shout. Um, and especially if you, you love Chablis and, and White Burgundy, then we need to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we'll, we're probably going to finish these glasses <laughs> exactly. off camera. There will be no uh, and, um, <laughs> Sorry about that. But we will spit sometimes, so that you don't have to. So you don't have to. Cheers. <laughs>